urine or notice any change to your toilet habits, speak to your GP immediately. For more, visit mariekeating.ie slash red card. Kindly supported by Roche Products Ireland Limited. Off the ball. This is News Talk. You're welcome back. Very happy to say All-Ireland winner with Kerry, Darren O'Sullivan is with us. Darren, great to have you on. Cheers, Joe. How are things? Yeah, very well. So lots to talk about from the weekend that was. Can I jump in at a debate we were having earlier on in the show? It's about rules, which is, I know is a very boring thing to talk about, yeah. but it often comes up at this time of the year. And then we'll get into the football, and there were some good talking points in the football. Uh, two things. So it seems that Hurling had this issue with players dragging players in on goal down and there was no black card obviously and so they've mm-hmm. come up with this new rule the penalty inside the 20 for a foul inside the 20 metre line and it seemed at Congress they sort of said well sure look if we're doing it for hurling we'll throw it in on football as well as if these are the same games almost I'm not sure football needed this I don't remember in the same way that was happening in hurling last year I don't remember in football uh, lads you know being routinely dragged down in on goal I felt like the black card was largely doing his job and it does seem based on the opening weekend like the referee has some tricky decisions here with this rule trying to judge whether well one was it a foul and then secondly to what extent was it a goal scoring opportunity on the basis of weekend one there's going to be no fun for referees No and look you know I've given uh, referees enough of uh, an earful over the years and their job isn't getting any easier with all the rule changes and I suppose the speed of the game increasing every year like that look we brought in the black card to take away from the cynical fouls for players going in and out of goals and it seemed to for me anyway it was doing the job um, anybody with a cynical foul was being punished with a black card I couldn't make, make sense of it like comparing hurling and football they're two different sports um, there's no comparison only that there's 15 players in the field and we use the same goals mm. Um I could understand the bringing into hurling, even though I know a lot of diehard hurling fans don't like rule changes. But I could see why they bring it into the hurling. There was there was a cynical edge um, creeping in over the last couple of years, and there wasn't enough of a punishment for it. So I could see that. But for the football, like it is hard to understand mm. um, why they would bring it in and why they bring it in now, when, like you said, the black card seemed to be doing exactly what it was supposed to do. Yeah. We were talking on the news round earlier and we hadn't actually realised it was applicable to football as well. You know, sometimes you turn up and you, you don't pay attention to every motion in Congress and then suddenly the league starts and the whistle goes and you're like, what? When did this come in? I, I, I was the same myself. I saw the, uh, the first Dublin penalty and I was there going, geez, thought of my eyes at first. Um, I was like, geez, he seemed way outside the box. <laughs> but um, no, look, it's a, it's a strange one. I don't understand it like that. Like a lot of the things that go through Congress, I don't really understand, to be honest, um, the rationale with it. So it's like that. It's another rule change for football that wasn't needed. Mm. Uh, one other one which came up. So they're obviously uh, we're in hurling, they've made quite a few rule changes. What's still here in football is the offensive mark that has very much survived. And that just kind of came up because we were chatting earlier and we were saying, geez, they're bringing in this new extra rule which wasn't needed. And yet they've left the offensive mark in just to give the the history of this because even in my head I wasn't clear on how this all worked earlier in the news round so in short this was trialled in the 2019 league then wasn't used in championship I think Dublin ignored it in that league because they said what's the point in actually working at this if it's not going to be around for championship and then it was brought in for league and championship 2020 now the pandemic obviously interrupted any serious development time you would think with the mark and, 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 and so it probably wasn't exploited to its full extent that probably applies to this season a little bit as well, like time is of the essence at the moment. But I mean, one, do you like it? People feel it's too much of a reward for just catching a simple pop pass half the time. And and two, do you think we will see this exploited more and almost blow up in some game when like a Jim McGuinness type really takes advantage of it? I do think eventually, uh, when teams have enough time to work on it, um, teams really exploit it. Do I like it? No. Um, I think it's it's another uh, rule that, that slows down the game. Like you said, it's not really a reward for a high feeling. It's just a reward for collecting the ball. It doesn't even have to be a long kick. I think it's anything from outside the forty-five, mm. maybe twenty yards or something mm. like that. There's there's a bit of blurred lines with that as well. I look. I think it's a waste of time. I think if a team actually went about working at it in training, they could cause uh, wreck with it. Um, 
but would it be an enjoyable game to watch? I don't think so. No. Um, it's it's a, like that. I think football has been kind of played. Uh, we've, we've been the guinea pig, I suppose, over the last couple of years, number of years, really, with rule changes, a bit of trial and error. Error will try it for the league, which is downgrading the league, um, mm. which we've all said over the last couple of years has become a fantastic competition, the pace of it, the intensity. Um, and these rules just kind of, they ruin it. They ruin it as a spectacle like that. Even the few, um, the few marks I did see over the weekend, whatever momentum was going, whatever rhythm was going in the game, it just stops it dead. Mm. I, look, it's not for me. I know other people might disagree, but for me, I think it's boring. It's, I don't think it's a reward for anything skillful. It's just receiving a ball. Well, I know, like, I mean, there are different types of players, obviously, and so different situations apply. But, like, take you. I mean, if yeah. a, a ball is, 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 is punted into you and you take it into your chest and your man is running behind you, the reason I'm there to watch the the game is to watch you turn on your heel and try and skin him. Like, and everyone's mm. everyone's kind of on their feet for that. And what's going to happen here? I mean, geez, if you grew if you grew up and got into the habit of oh, ball into chest, I'll take my mark and have a crack at a point. Yeah. I, that's not good for the game. No, and that's that's exactly it. I suppose I'd probably be a prime example. My game was never to stop up and kick. The, like, I just think it, it it's giving players an easy way out, and you're taking away the. What we want to see, we want to see one-on-one -on -one battles. We want to see a forward stand eyeball to eyeball with a back and go at him. And I just think it takes that out of it. So I just think it's just going to make it boring. It'll make it like a free free taking competition. And if you have any bit of cuteness inside, no, I suppose if I look back at my own team that I played with, like Don, he now would have would have been a great mm. um, reward for someone like him if he caught one of yeah. his uh, high balls or something. I could understand that, but then it's a case of how high do you have to jump because I'm not going to be catching any ball like Donahue. So, um, look, I just think I could understand if at different stage when they want to bring it in around the midfield to to reward a fella for catching a kick out and not being swarmed yeah. when he hit the ground. I could understand that. Uh, hard to referee, hard to manage, but um, this attacking mark for me, it's just me. A little bit more like Aussie rules and very soft start. So, yeah. no, I couldn't see the point in it. But I do think teams will work on it mm. because if you have a couple of sharpshooters inside, um, it is a great way for matching oh. up with a couple of big scores. Well, if if you can get lads, you know, working in rotation around the D somewhere, and and you get a Conor McManus on it around the D, and just a pop pass, and the movement's good. I mean, it'll be very interesting. So you, I, again, a bit like last year managers have a lot going on and a lot of games and not much time so to what extent it can be worked yeah. on we'll see uh, l let's talk about the weekend then lots of good talking points we had Dublin in Hyde Park against Roscommon we had Kerry Galway obviously we had uh, Donegal and Tyrone Donegal winning that game by two points we had Armagh getting off to a good start against Monaghan we might start with Kerry 421 Galway 11 in Tralee a 22 point defeat caught the eye for obvious reasons I mean the quote of the weekend was Peter Keane saying it could have gone the other way handily enough that was <laughs> that I mean not even I'm uh, that one <laughs> in fairness I almost respect him for, for having the audacity to pull that off and keep a straight face so like uh, this did yeah. feel very akin to a challenge match from Galway's point of view it's hard to know why they were so flat well to be fair to them it's probably not hard to know why they were so flat, I guess they haven't trained much, but um, it's kind of worrying flatness from them, wasn't it? Yeah, like, like I kind of like the first couple of like these national league games, I've said in my career's IP that they're glorified challenge games. And right. um, teams don't want to show their hand. The fact that you can take seven players off, half your team is going to be replaced. Do you know, it's, it's always going to be a bit strange, but I think um, going into it, like, my thing I was looking out for is individually all these players would have had programs in the lockdown so they would have come back in good shape um Galway just didn't look in good shape you weren't going to get in good shape in three weeks back training mm. it was about what work you did on your own and whatever it was i don't know what they've done the last three weeks they looked flat they looked disinterested they looked disorganized it was it was embarrassing and to be fair look kerry were very good um there's, there's no point saying any different the players are very sharp and they look strong and they look fast. Do you know what? They look in tune um, yeah. with everything they were they wanted to do. I think they worked well, very very well defensively, and they broke. Um, they're a very athletic team now, much more athletic than they have been over the last couple of years. And the big thing for me was they had six forwards on the pitch. 
Right. So as soon as the ball broke down, they went into attack. But if I'm a Galway fan or, or I'm on the panel, I'm getting worried. Um, there was no fight. There was no nothing. There was there was hardly a dirty blow. Not that you're looking out for that, but you'd hope that somebody would get somebody cranky with the hammering that was going on and would do something. And I, I don't think poor Joyce is going to stand for what he saw um, the weekend. So for me, as a Kerry fan, it was great to watch. Um, you do have to pull yourself back a bit um, because as good as Kerry were, God, we were that bad. Um, mm. You you just kind of have to pull it to the to the back burner and just get on with it like that. It was a joy to watch uh, David, David Clifford in action. Mm. His brother Paddy was outstanding as well. But if you're nitpicking, Kerry only had re- three really scores from play like um, David Paddy and uh, Killian Splann. And this is me nitpicking. You'd want a, a wider range of scores from your start, starting forwards. Mm. Yeah, I suspect Kerry have been stewing in that cork defeat all winter and maybe uh, jumped into their individual programmes with a bit of extra relish. So if if Dublin are the standard bearers when it comes to fitness and physicality, and you know one of the reasons it said Mayo could kind of give them a game is they got pretty close to that level. Where are Kerry? To be honest, I don't know. I actually I couldn't help but get carried away last year in the league when they came back from the lockdown. Um, I thought the, the two league games I saw them, I thought they looked really sharp and they looked tuned in and then they fell flat in their face yeah. um, against Cork. Um, I still think they're a work in progress. I think um, their backs and their defensive structure looked really good the weekend. I think they looked organised. Um, but they got no test. Mm-hmm. I think next weekend is going to be a great test for them because Dublin are Dublin. Yeah. And I think, I was actually thinking about it recently and I said, the team that would benefit most from COVID is Dublin. Um, because even in the weekend there, you see their their main players, John Small, Fenton, Kilkenny, Conor Callan, the fellas who were there, their core group, they got a great break and they needed that break and it was forced upon them. So they had no choice but to take it and they got a break away from each other. So it's kept them fresh. And if you saw them the weekend, they all looked hungry. They all worked their socks off. And it, they didn't look like a team who were getting bored or getting tired of um, being together at all. Mm. So, Paddy Clifford. I mean, I know you mentioned David. It's hard It's hard not to talk about David in this game. Insane. Like, it is just insane. 3-6 three, six, mm. three, six in 55 yeah. minutes. He's 22. Like, a prodigy who just delivers. It's just, it's it's so interesting to watch uh, this guy deliver. Yeah. But the, the brother, Paddy, you mentioned... I saw Tomas O'Shea on, on RT saying, you know, kind of waiting two, three, two, three years maybe to get his chance. Potty, more of a link man as such. Um, the yeah. finish for his goal, it was very Clifford technique. His, his gait or the angle of his knee, uh, you know, looked mm-hmm. similar to the brother in certain ways. So so how big a prospect is he or what's, what's been the word on Potty last few years? Yeah, well, like, I suppose, like the way he played uh, the weekend was, I suppose it's what he's been doing in the county championship for the last couple of years. Um, what I found interesting was actually his goal if you actually watch it back, he uh, he went all the way back to his own 45, I think, trying to get the ball off David Moore. And I remember just thinking, I'm not going to get that off David. This is David's role now. He's going to take the pass. But what he did was he turned and he just started making his way up the field. And then he came late. Um, he's a great engine on him. Like you said, he's more of a link man, but he's well able to finish. Um, now, maybe not as well, off, well on his right foot because he missed the sitter, but... In the long run, I actually think um, missing a few chances is probably good for him as well because he might think every game is going to be like this, which it isn't. Um, but he has, like that, he's a he's another fellow who has it all, uh, has all the skills in his locker. And himself and David have a great understanding, as you'd expect, mm. um, how they'll do when one of them gets into a bit of hot water and a bit of a scrap on the pitch. Pitch is another thing. Will we see a bit of red mist looking out for the two brothers? Um, that'll be interesting. But he has all the skills. Um, I think Everton Kerry has known that for the last number of years, but it's going to be, does he have the temperament? Can he get the consistent, consistency right to perform week in, week out? And um, the next couple of weeks are going to be interesting. I think he'll enjoy it. He's, he's physically very fit. He's a strong lad. Yeah. And I think probably the setback of not being picked over the last year, year or two, when people have been talking about him, probably has the fire in the belly that he's got his opportunity now, and I don't think he's going to let it go. Okay. If uh, Kerry are short in any area for you ahead of this year, what is it? Uh, look, I think we always go back to the defence. Um, it seems to be an easy option with Kerry just playing the defence for everything. Um, 
my thing is with the defense, we we've never really had a proper structure where they right up where I think they've um, they feel comfortable and they have a good transition from defense to attack. Um, like if I went through all the defenders individually, very good individual defenders, great on the ball, brilliant going forward, great attacking threats. It's both can they get get that understanding and that cohesion like a team like Dublin have where they're totally in sync. Mm. And the other option is I still think Kerry are very reliant on David Moore in midfield. Uh, I think if the ball, no, it doesn't get booted out there too often. But I think if you shut David down, we might lack um, there. No, I think we have good options, but I still don't think they're dominating or taking a load off David as much as possibly they should be. Yeah. Well, it's the Dubs and Thurlis next weekend. I mean, Kerry looking very good early doors, whets the appetite for that. And, and Dublin just kind of went down to Hyde Park, 122 on the board, no problem. Yeah beat Roscommon kind of comfortably a uh, few new faces yeah. Michael Shields was in goal uh, Sean McMahon defender Darren Mullen wing forward they had uh, Brian Fenton alongside Tom Lahiff who's a, a Tom bit of a Lahiff, yeah, yeah a bit of a late bloomer it seems because James McCarty was in the half back mm. line obviously Michael Dara's retired but you know they can just absorb all these mini changes and just seem to kick on each year and then Cormac Costello does his thing you know scores a million points or 113 in this yeah. instance in the league and, and your, every other team is like geez, we'll take him yeah it's amazing really because he does that all the time he's, he's a fantastic footballer and he, like I've met him once or twice and different nice lad right. Kerry Blood of course but um, <laughs> he uh, like he's a super player but even if he keeps that going for the league will they give him the shot in the in the championship he seems to be the unlucky one over the last couple of years but what a player like mm. so that's next weekend that'll be really good I think people were looking out for Donegal Tyrone as well this was uh, you know decent intensity both teams seemed kind of happy enough Donegal 18 points Tyrone 16 points yeah. uh, Paul Donaghy seemed to catch the eye for Tyrone with 10 points 22 years of age there was that kick outside of the boot around the 45 um, I mean that looked impressive what do you think Fergal Logan and Brian Dewar are working towards admittedly you don't have much evidence to work off here they were they, they looked extremely direct right um, bits I saw now they were trying to get the ball in as quickly as possible um, sometimes they were kicking from the wrong areas a bit too rash with the kicking but from what I see they're trying to get the ball in there get it into the full power line, get runners coming off. And they kicked some great scores. Like you said, Dan, he kicked that one up at the outside the right. He kicked a great one as well off the left. Mm. Um, they have good forwards, but at the same time, I think it was 11 wides they kicked. So they will have to work on that side of the game. They missed a lot of very kickable scores. Um, so, like, I, I don't know, is that composure? Because they're good players. They're getting to the right position. And I think composure at the last minute was leaving them down. So any team to kick 16 points and have 11 wides mm. on top of it um, are showing a good attack and intent. Donegal for me are one, to be honest they're one of my favourite teams over the last couple of years I think they kind of um, a bit like Kerry last year I think they maybe took their eye off the mm. challenge that was ahead of them and uh, got caught last year um, I expect them to go from strength to strength this year like that, like all the other teams, I don't think any of them are wanting to show their hand too early. Mm. There's a bit of shadow boxing going on. Um, I've always felt that this league was a bit unfair to the other teams that they'd be just sick of looking at each other. Um, and I think that's where the likes of Kerry and Dublin will have an advantage of playing different teams from different provinces. But like that, it was an entertaining game. Um, any day, get, I think 34 scores um, is good and there could have been many, many more. Um, like that, Michael Murphy was outstanding. Yeah. Um, hard to think of anyone that's consistent in the same mobile. Well, Brian Fenton. But uh, um, like Michael Murphy, it's just like he's, he is like, but Michael Murphy is like Dublin. He just goes out and does his thing. Mm. Um, the, just leads from the front. He can keep three or four points from play as well. Um, it's just a pity you couldn't have Michael Murphy at midfield and full forward. He'd be, uh, be well on the ball then. There is a real parallel. You mentioned it there between Donegal and Kerry. Last year, everyone looked at both of them and said, OK, this is going to be very interesting now. And both fell flat in their faces. And so you, you, for all the talent and for all the reasons, you know, last year, uh, which are still here this year, to, to believe that both of them have a big chance, there's kind of this nagging feeling of, well, what? Why? it did go badly wrong last year under the gun, under pressure. And we're almost not going to quite know until they're in the melting pot again. No, that's that's the thing, and I suppose, I suppose from a Kerry point of view, and you saw 
um, the way they went at the game the weekend that was pleasing but like league and championship very differently I know they brought in um, geez, his name is something you know um, they brought in someone into the backroom team who's going to work on more on the, the mental preparation and right. um, it was something I actually thought it wouldn't have been something I was big into when I was playing never thought about it um, but it's definitely something as I suppose I got into the latter stages of my career and since I retired probably more into that I've always felt that Dublin have that side of the game you can get as fit and as strong and as good as, good as you want but when the when the things aren't going right for you or you know the weather changes mm. just small things that they can set their, their head up you know I always found that even Dublin when things weren't going their way they just had a way of pressing the reset reset yes. button yes and then just going again. Well, and you're, you're like describing going. the court game here, aren't you? The weather and just, yeah. you know, one of those yeah, days. That's what you're talking about. That, like, yeah, it's just one of them things that, like the weather, like you're not expecting, you're training with a dry ball and it dashes rain and all of a sudden something that, like a kick pass that you wouldn't think twice about, all of a sudden you're doubting yourself, geez, it could skid off the surface here or your man's, man's right tight. And, you know, small things like that, whereas mm-hmm. I think, like that's where the mental preparation comes in where you just say, no, I do this every, I'm doing this every, day of the week mm. just kick it just do it this is our game plan and I always think the last number of years now to be fair I've always felt that Dublin are that bit ahead of people out of the of all the chasing pack mm. um, there's only so much fitter you can be and I, I don't buy into the fact that Dublin are so much fitter I, do, I just don't buy into it I don't buy into the right. fact that they have better footballers than everyone because you go through all the chasing pack you name all the, they all have very good footballers mm. But there's a reason why Dublin, like you said, go up to Roscommon and just do what they do. Yes. I, mean, I don't know, they say a stat did over eight high eighty percent um conversion. Shot conversion rate. Yeah. They just don't they don't go for like if you went like I couldn't really name up many of their scores because they just seem simple and efficient. They don't go for the outside of the boots like Paul well, he's you know that we we're gonna talk about and say yeah, it was yeah, great. Yeah. They just don't do it. They yeah. they keep everything very safe. Um, it's very structured. They get into the scoring zone and then they shoot and they're ruthless. And that's why I think they, they all have their roles. They buy into it and it's all about the bigger picture, the, the greater cause, and that's winning. Yes. And I think they do that better than anyone else. Yes, they're relentless. They're relentless. Yeah. Listen, brilliant stuff. Interesting couple of weeks coming up. Darren, thanks a mil. No water. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Darren O'Sullivan there. Back in a sec. Off the ball on News Talk. Any news? Ah, uh, no. You? Eh, uh, no. <laughs> nothing, nothing exciting. Too much in the weekend, or? Nah. Yourself? Oh, we. Uh, well, what did we do? 